welcome to roadmap to residency hello everyone i am abhiraj welcome to our cop 250 mass mega sessions uh, we are currently in our hematology oncology sessions uh, we will be running through some questions with you guys to help you on your journey to a 250 so considering the abo and rs blood group systems which blood types should the medical team select to ensure the safest and the most compatible transfusion a 55 year old man with chronic kidney disease presents to the emergency department with symptomatic anemia and signs of acute blood loss. Lab tests reveal a hemoglobin level of 7.5. The medical team decides to initiate the blood transfusion to address the anemia and stabilize the patient. The blood bag informs that the available blood units are uh, type AB positive, type B negative, and type O positive. The patient's blood group is confirmed as type A positive. Now, what... Uh, uh, which blood types should the medical team select to ensure the safest and the most compatible transfusion? Type AB positive, type B negative, type O positive, or type A positive. So the patient has a type A positive blood, indicating the presence of A antigens and the RS factor. So the, the donor blood types are type AB positive, because it contains both A and B antigens, considered the universal recipient for AB or blood groups, but RS factor compatibility is, is essential. The AB negative, the B negative type of blood lacks A and RS antigens, are potentially compatible with the patient's A positive blood type. So type O positive lacks A and B antigens, but has the RS factor, making it a universal donor for red blood cells. So when we analyze the different options, option A, that is a type AB positive, when the patient can receive type AB positive blood, it is not the most efficient choice as the patient's blood type is A positive. Option B, that is type B negative, this option is potentially compatible as it lacks A antigens, but as compatibility must also be considered here. Now type O positive, now while universal donor for red blood cells, the ABO compatibility with this patient's blood type is not ideal. Type A positive is the most appropriate choice as it matches the patient's A positive blood type. So to ensure the safest and the most compatible transfusion, the medical teams will select type A positive blood for the patient. This choice ensures both ABO and RS compatibility and minimizing the risk of hemoly hemolytic reactions. So let's talk about different sort of blood groups. So we have the ABO classification and we have the RS classification. So uh, type A is where there are a group antigens on the RBC surface, A antigens, okay? So type A means there are A antigens on the surface, type B means there are B antigens on the surface, and type AB means there are both A and B antigens on the surface, and type O means there are no antigens on the surface. So when there are antigens against type A, when there are an antigens of type A on this blood, so the patients having type A have antibodies against B type, okay? They have anti-B anti uh, antibodies. Similarly, with blood group B, they have the anti-A, A and B, they have none, and O, they have both. So the clinical relevance is the compatible RBC types to receive are either they can receive type A blood, okay, or they can receive type O blood, okay, because they have no antigens, so they will not cause any reactions. And type A blood, they have the similar antigens, so again, they will not cause any reactions. Uh, similar for the type uh, blood group B, the same is B and O. For the group AB, they can receive AB, they can receive A, they can receive B, and they can also receive O. So they are called the universal recipient. And type O is called as universal donor. So now what is the RS classification? RS positive and RS negative. So RS is an antigen that is present on the surface of the RBC. If RS antigen or D antigen is present on the RBC, it is called as RS positive. If it is not present, it is called as RS negative. Similarly, if it is present uh, on the RBC surface, the blood will not have antibodies against the D uh, antigens. But if it's not, the blood will have anti-D antibodies there. But uh, the thing is that if the a patient has a RS positive blood group, okay? Now uh, they can receive both RS positive and RS negative blood, okay? Because they, if they, for example, the patient is RS positive, right? Then so he can receive the RS positive, okay? Because he has no antibodies against this. And he, has, he can also receive RS negative because the RS negative contains no antigens, no D antigens, which will not cross react. But in case of RS negative patient, they can only receive RS negative blood group. It's because if they receive RS positive, the, this uh, D antigen will cross react with this antibody and cause reactions. 
So let's talk about cross matching. How the cross matching is actually done. So we take the recipient serum and then we take the donor's blood and then we incubate, mix and incubate it for one hour at 37 degrees Celsius. We wash it for three times. And again, we add two drops of anti-human uh, anti -human globulin, ASG, and then we centrifuge it. So if there is agglutination, then the blood group is not compatible. But if there is no agglutination, that means that the blood group is compatible and we can transfuse the patient that blood. Now let's talk about one more question here. So uh, given these findings, what is the most likely etiology for the acute respiratory distress observed in this, in this patient during the blood transfusion? So a 65 year old woman with a complex medical history, including in this renal disease, I requiring hemodialysis is admitted to the hospital for palliative care due to the advanced stage of a chronic illness. As part of the supportive care plan, the medical team decides to administer a blood transfusion to manage a severe dementia. Shortly, severe anemia, sorry. Shortly after the initiation of transfusion, the patient experiences a sudden onset of respiratory distress, characterized by dyspnea and increased work of breathing. Clinical examination reveals oxygen desaturation, chest axillary demonstrates diffuse bilateral pulmonary infiltrates, and notably, the patient has no known history of heart failure or pre existing lung disease or any recent cardiac events. So, what is the most likely etiology of the acute respiratory distress observed in this patient? Acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. Allergic transfusion reaction, febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction, delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction, or transfusion related acute lung injury. So, option A, the acute hemolytic transfusion reaction occurs due to AVO incompatibility and is characterized by the intravascular hemolysis. Option B, uh, is the allergic reactions involving the IgE antibodies and typically present with symptoms like urticaria and itching. Uh, the option C is the febrile non hemolytic reaction, now, which are associated with cytokine release but do not typically manifest as acute respiratory distress. The delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction involves the immune sensitization to the minor red blood cell antigens, leading to the delayed hemolysis. So, option E involves the infusion of donor antibodies against the recipient leukocytes, resulting in a non cardiogenic pulmonary edema and acute respiratory distress. Now, this condition matches the clinical presentation described in our question stem. So, the most likely etiology for the acute respiratory distress observed in this patient during the blood transfusion is FRALI or transfusion related acute lung injury characterized by the donor antibodies against the recipient leukocytes. Now, this is a critical consideration in patients experiencing sudden onset respiratory distress during or shortly after a blood transfusion. Now, let's talk about the immunologic blood transfusion reactions. So, allergic, uh, allergic or anaphylactic reactions are the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction against the plasma proteins in transfused blood. IgA deficient individuals should receive the blood products without the IgA, timing within 3 minutes to 2 to 3 hours due to the release of performed inflammatory mediators in degranulated mast cells. Clinical presentation include allergies like urticaria, pruritus, anaphylaxis like wheezing, hypertension, and respiratory arrest, and shock. So, Acute hemolytic transfusion reaction is type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, where it typically causes the intravascular hemolysis during the transfusion or within the 24 hour of uh, the transfusion. The patient may have fever, hypothalamus, tachycardia, flank pain, and hemoglobinuria. In the febrile hemolytic transfusion reaction is when the cytokines created by the donor WBCs accumulate during the storage of blood products. And it can occur within one to six hours due to the performed uh, preformed cytokines. And the patient may have fever, headaches, and chills or flossing. So the transfusion related acute lung injury is the is one of the most important uh, blood transfusion reactions. So there are two hit mechanisms. So the neutrophils are sequestered and primed in pulmonary vasculature due to the recipient risk factors. The neutrophils are activated by a product that is anti leukocyte antibodies in the transfused blood are released inflammatory mediators, which causes increased capillary permeability and pulmonary edema. It can occur within minutes to six hours. And if it's if it is occurring after uh, six hours, then it is uh, generally called as the pulmonary contusion. The spiritual distress, non cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Uh, the delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction is the anamnestic response to the foreign antigen on the donor RBCs or other minor blood groups that previously encountered by recipient uh, typically causes uh, extravascular hemolysis. Onset is about 24 hours, usually presents within one to two weeks, and is generally self limited and clinically silent. Now let's talk about one more uh, question here. So the question is, what pharmacological agent is commonly used to chelate and facilitate the excretion of excess iron in patients with iron overload due to chronic transfusion? Now, why I have kept this question is because 
Always I tell you, always read the last line first. So with this question, now you already know that the patient has had an overload. Now what drug to give you? You do not even need to read the whole question stem. So the options are folate, vitamin B12, def uh, uh, deferioxamine, erythropoietin, or desmutation. So the uh, correct answer is deferoxamine, which is a selecting agent administered apparently and it is effective in reducing the iron burden in this patient, thereby helping to prevent the complications associated with iron overload. Regularly monitoring the iron levels and adjusting the solution therapy is as needed an important components of the management of patients with iron overload. Thank you for watching. Keep studying hard.